I'll run out of ideas one day. But that day is not today. Just count yourself lucky I'm not subjecting you to a bush ranking list. I'll do it. I've done it before. I actually already have done something similar in the past. Come to think of it, making the same joke twice would just be redundant. Today, quite possibly the most pointless video you've ever wasted your time on. I hope your food has been delivered because you're about to spend the next 20 minutes learning absolutely zero knowledge critical to your life or Elden Ring experience, with a few try-hard jokes about asses and balls peppered in here and there just to make sure you're paying enough attention. Obviously, some bosses are unfortunately unable to be ranked. Some are literal statues and simply don't have the mental capacity to enjoy any kind of leisurely activity, while some are adequately prepared for the thinking but lack the physical appendages involved in moving the pieces. So essentially this means not only is this video pointless, but it's gonna be some hard-ass work for me too for some reason. <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, a person this creatively malnourished must have some mean bills he needs to pay, so um... <clears throat> Do you like ads? I should probably start with a better question. Do you like being on the internet with no restrictions, censorship, or fear of being digitally robbed? Today's video partner is NordVPN. It's their birthday soon. Look at this giant cake I baked for them. I don't know why I wrote this part in, it's just gonna be extra work for myself later on in the edit, but this is a special occasion. So not only are you getting access to an exclusive creator deal from NordVPN using my link, but they're also attaching an additional gift to every purchase of a two-year plan. It's their birthday, and they're giving out gifts? Whoa, that's ass backwards as shit, and you should totally take advantage of it. NordVPN is an absolute essential when it comes to traveling. When accessing public Wi-Fi, Nord will protect any cyber attacks from getting through and breaching your data, man-in-the-middle attacks, phishing, malware, DDoS attacks, which is wonderful if you're a streamer, all thanks to Nord's threat protection features. The world is starting to open back up again. Maybe you have travel plans in the future. I, maybe you're one of those people who take vacations to some tropical island in the middle of February because you can't stand the sight of snow. Well, when you're chilling out in the airport, let NordVPN keep you safe. You can sign up for an exclusive two-year creator deal with a 30-day money-back guarantee using my link in the description and the pinned comment. You might think it ridiculous, but I actually spent an embarrassing amount of time judging this boss's competency. The Mad Pumpkin was once a broken gladiator, meaning he likely values strength and brute forcing over every other approach you can possibly think of. Not only is this an inherently incompatible approach to something like chess, but his incessant madness thanks to the scent of blood, the humming of insects, or waiting too long in line at the credit union makes me think he wouldn't exactly be the greatest sport about anything either. Playing against the Mad Pumpkin head by itself, I'm sure, is by no means challenging. The fact that he has a giant dome on his head vastly limits his perception of the world around him, no doubt, so it could be as easy as just switching the pieces on his side of the board, crying checkmate, and if there isn't a judge around to fact check your bullshit, you'll probably just win. And then he'll just cross his arms in disgust and leave everyone with a final gong noise as the top of his bullhead hits the doorframe on the way out. But you probably wouldn't want to defeat him. Someone who devolves into this much of a crybaby at the slightest inconvenience I don't think would handle losing at anything, much less chess. He'll head buff the whole table into the next zip code and then just say, well, no one said I couldn't do that. He's the person that's convinced himself that by shutting off the rest of the world around him, he's become smarter than he really is. And anything that flies contradictory to that is likely to trigger a meltdown. You'll probably just let him win on that principle alone, just because you don't want your name being brought up in history as Chess's first civilian casualty. Loretta is one of those opponents that loves to test you, but in a reassuring kind of way. Intentionally making very wrong and obviously stupid moves just to make yourself feel better. Every move you make is responded to with some sort of needless, almost condescending praise or applause boasting about what a strong opponent you are, and that you're just not playing in your elo and you should be much higher in the rankings. But as the match continues, you can't help but feel a bit bothered by all the theatrics. At times you'll think she's sitting there pondering her next move, but you slowly realize she's actually just been staring at the same random spot on the board for the past seven minutes. You pretend to move a bishop only to sit it right back where it was in the same spot, and her head will suddenly perk up as she robotically continues the ever unnecessary good job attitude. You even check behind you a couple times to make sure she isn't reading off a teleprompter. And God bless your little almond brain too, because you almost thought this was going to be an easy match. But as soon as you put her at a great disadvantage, you hear what sounds like a fog machine malfunctioning in the next room over, and she just evaporates in an anticlimactic blue smoke, only for the real Loretta to show up drenched in rain, apologize for being 20 minutes late, and then checkmate you before she's even removed her trench coat. Crucible Knight Ordovis is the type that puts his honor on the line for absolutely everything, no matter how insignificant, perhaps even to a fault. Something as simple as making a ham and cheese sandwich he'll do in the name of the unquestionable glory of the Erd Tree. The sandwich won't receive any blessings or boons or whatever, it certainly won't taste like anything except stale gross bread, but whatever the task is, you can be wholly sure he'll dedicate his entire self-worth to it. Unfortunately, this makes him a bit of a head sore when he loses. He has the same lack of sportsmanship as the pumpkin head, but displays it in a 
much more hopeless, albeit interesting way. Whereas the pumpkin head takes everything as a slight against his personality and cleverness, Ordovis will devolve into what can only be described as a drunk toddler. Just as you're about to claim your trophy for your well-fought victory, Ordovis catches the shiny gleam from his peripheral view and starts pointing at it, crying, shitting in his diaper, and then holding his breath until inevitably the judges have no choice but to succumb to the whining and give the trophy to him instead. Because the fact is, as headstrong and honorable as his spirit remains, not even the strongest faith in the fundamental principles can stand up to the Sicilian defense. He'll even resort to tactics like carving up decoy chess pieces and slyly placing them onto his side of the board, with all the stealth and subtlety of a T-Rex taking a shit. He's a knight that'll do anything to win, but he's much better at being an actual knight than he is controlling his knights on the board. Radon is one of those few opponents who actually agrees to a perfectly respectable match with little trickery or anything aside from just playing against you as you would another normal person. But he does so with a sense of urgency and resolve that you can't quite pinpoint. Is he casting some more of his space magic as a demonstration, or is he just holding a magnet under the table with one hand while doing a Harry Potter-like whoosh with the other just so he can look more impressive before he gets his ass kicked? He's not fond of losing, but yeah, who isn't? At least he's able to handle it with a semblance of respect. He just gets up from the table and mutters to himself, I have much to learn, or some other foreboding final mic drop that insinuates he's two push-ups away from unlocking Ultra Instinct. He handles his wins with the same respect. No matter how well or how poorly he does in any match, the only thing he ever seems interested in is looking the coolest when walking out of the room. You could clean sweep the guy without having a single piece captured, and he would still nod in respect, get up from his chair, bow awkwardly like a Shinmu 3 NPC, and then just dismiss himself, never to be seen again. He's never in a bad mood, and he just seems like he's in it for the thrill of battle. The only drawback being you'll be constantly distracted by the smell of horse ass because he kept insisting Leonard be in the room with him for moral support. Goad Froy the Grafted puts up a fight he thinks. He's the epitomization of the phrase confused but has spirit. He shows up so excitedly that he forgets to register himself as a player on the way in and just walks into the venue and picks a table to sit at waiting for someone else to challenge him. He's the kind of guy who tries to light an iceberg on fire. A real 200 IQ dude. I'm not sure what kind of mental approach a boss like Godefroy would even have at a game like this. Maybe he watched one episode of Queen's Gambit and saw people using their hands to move pieces around and just thought, hands? I've got a shitload of those. Godefroy the Grafted doesn't have a goddamn clue what he's doing. Every move he makes on the board he feels needs to be physically exaggerated to some degree, like he's summoning the fucking Cyber End Dragon. He thinks everything that requires any semblance of thought or effort must be compared to Dark Souls in some way, and he unironically owns and wields three katanas. His hand gestures and theatrical reactions to getting all this piece captured puts on a display so grandiose rumors begin to circulate that the venue may have accidentally been double booked by a fucking LARPing guild. Godefroy is perpetually distracted. He uses video games and cheap pursuits to blind himself to the increasingly ongoing tragedies that plague the very existence of humanity, much to our indifference. His attention deficit prevents him from spending more than a few seconds thinking about his next move, lest he get bored and stick one of the bishops up his nose. Esger grew up fostering an edgy personality in his high school years, but without ever accumulating the appropriate amount of real-life suffering that actually contextualizes his edginess. The result is a ridiculous-looking bloke wearing about two aisles worth of Party City decorations. His whole game revolves around looking intimidating enough to pressure you into making mistakes, but you're more likely to have holes punched in your strategy because he hasn't showered in weeks and his breath smells like rotten curly fries. He wants to look impressive by maintaining eye contact while simultaneously moving the pieces to his desired locations, but all he really does is end up moving the wrong pieces and getting himself fucked before you can even do a proper opening. Regardless of whether you end up winning or losing, when the match is all finished up, he just hisses like a snake, throws sand at you, and then legs it for the door slowly enough for you to still see him running by the time you've looked up. Not exactly a hard opponent. In fact, the entire match was rather uneventful. You'll probably forget about it before the end of the day. And then you find out three years later he was on, like, a watch list or something. Margit shows up to the venue thinking he's been invited to a boxing match. He bursts through the double doors with both hands, has two lackeys behind him taking his robe off and showing his massive, weird shoulders. I guess no one explained the rules of chess to him properly, but can you really blame anyone? Oh, what? Wait a minute. That giant tree with a blanket on it is actually a, a person? Sorry, forgive me. I didn't even notice. I guess the only reason he never bothered to learn the rules is because he insists on only doing matches with those at extremely low elo. Perhaps because he has a superiority complex to nurture 
answer, but no one in the venue has really bothered to ask. At least not until it eventually becomes a problem and people start realizing there's a huge decline in the game's interest because a bunch of people who wanted to learn got their asses handed to them by a talking hairball with a fire extinguisher. It's doubly insulting when you realize this guy is an accomplished grandmaster player in disguise and could have spent his time finding matches with those in his fucking elo, but apparently this isn't how he wants to play the game. He'd rather spend 10 minutes every morning doing power poses in the mirror, thinking about all the poor annoying whelps he's going to mow down today. He cleans the little shits like you out from underneath his toilet lid every morning. Whenever he lifts a piece to move it, he lets it hang in the air for a few seconds before slamming it down so as to cause some kind of suspense that doesn't exactly translate well over a board game, but he thinks it's doing something, so might as well just let him keep doing it. No one really feels like bringing it up to him and risk getting bonked on the head by an oversized tree branch. Fia and her Tier 3 subs is a set of multiple matches that pit you up against five opponents, which makes it really easy to get intimidated by the sheer amount of raw man standing in your way. However, this actually works in your favor quite wonderfully because no one told them you're all playing on the same single chessboard and none of the champions can agree on where to move the rooks and at least two of them would probably rather be playing the new Call of Duty. Whenever one hand goes up to move a piece, another dude with a slightly different strategy quickly retracts that hand back for him and whispers something in his ear while pointing at something on the board that he thinks is important. And as the match continues, you slowly begin to realize that none of these guys are particularly here by their own volition. You ask them this, but they start writhing and screaming like a ball of spattering zoo animals, insisting that they're all very personally interested in the pursuit of intellectual games like chess. You checkmate them in three moves, some old bag and a withered hood comes up to you and congratulates you before falling asleep and snoring in the middle of the floor while the rest of the venue is still finishing up their games. And you're pretty sure you can hear a dragon outside for some reason. You can't have any sort of meme tier list without inevitably drawing attention to the Melania-sized elephant in the room. Oh dearie me, what to say about this boss. Melania is undefeatable, in case someone out there didn't already know that. Imagine participating in a casual laid-back weekend of chess drills and exercises, practicing openings and looking up YouTube tutorials and whatnot, and as if cruelly designed by fate, Magnus fucking Carlson just shows up to your table and demands you pay his mortgage if you can't beat him. In summary, being matched up against Melania Melania in chess is an anxiety-inducing experience. You can't quite pinpoint why, but there's this constant feeling of dismay hanging in the air. Like you're suddenly waiting for one of her knights to sprout wings if your pieces get too close. Something isn't quite right here, but the match is going kind of well, so you can't really complain too much. Everyone is being sportsmanlike. She does insist on bringing back a piece of her own every time she captures one of yours, which gets a little annoying the fourth time it happens, but you've learned to play around it. And just when you're finally getting your bearings, you look down at the board and suddenly you're playing Monopoly, and she just swept up all the green properties. What the fuck just happened? You can't just switch games like that whenever you want. I was winning, you cock! I exclaimed to an unflinching Melania, arms folded and waiting for me to hurry up and land on Pacific Avenue. I feel like I'm explaining the rules to my little brother. This kind of shit is why you're undefeated, isn't it? Must be pretty nice never having to face defeat with a bit of dignity when you're allowed to bend the rules in a direction that fucks your enemies harder than life itself.